Hello friends, in our earlier discussion, we learnt that the mean free path of a gas molecule is its average path length between collisions and Maxwell distribution describes particle speeds in gases where the particles move freely without interacting with one another except for very brief elastic collisions in which they may exchange momentum and kinetic energy but do not change their respective states of intramolecular excitation as a function of the temperature of the system, the mass of the particle and speed of the particle. In today's lecture, we shall be talking about molar specific heats of an ideal gas. After going through this discussion, you should be able to identify that the internal energy of an ideal monoatomic gas is the sum of the translational kinetic energies of its atoms. Distinguish between monoatomic, diatomic and polyatomic ideal gases. Shall be able to evaluate the molar specific heats for a constant volume process and a constant pressure process of monoatomic, diatomic and polyatomic ideal gases. Identify that the energy transferred to an ideal gas as heat in a constant volume process goes entirely into the internal energy but that in a constant pressure process energy also goes into the work done to expand the gas. Calculate the work done by an ideal gas for a constant pressure process. Internal energy. Here we shall develop an expression for the energy associated with the random motions of the atoms or molecules in the gas. We shall then use that expression to derive the molar specific heats of an ideal gas. Let us first assume that our ideal gas is a monoatomic gas that is it has individual atoms rather than molecules and the gas could be helium, neon or argon. Let us also assume that the internal energy is the sum of the translational kinetic energies of the atoms. The average translational kinetic energy of a single atom depends only on the gas temperature and is given by this equation K average is equal to 3 by 2 kT and a sample of n moles of such a gas contains n into Na atoms. The internal energy of the sample is then E internal is equal to n Na into K average and is equal to n Na into 3 by 2 kT. Using equation K is equal to R upon Na we can write E internal is equal to 3 by 2 nRT. So the internal energy of an ideal gas is a function of the gas temperature only. It does not depend on any other variable. Molar specific heat at constant volume. Figure shows n moles of an ideal gas at pressure P and temperature T confined to a cylinder of fixed volume V. The initial state I of the gas is marked on the PV diagram. Suppose now that you add a small amount of energy to the gas as heat Q by slowly turning up the temperature of the thermal reservoir. The gas temperature rises a small amount to T plus delta T and its pressure rises to P plus delta P bringing the gas to final state F. In such experiments, we would find that the heat is related to the temperature change by Q is equal to N Cv into delta T. Here Cv is a constant called the molar specific heat at constant volume. Substituting this expression for Q into the first law of thermodynamics as given by delta E internal is equal to N Cv delta T minus W. 
with the volume held constant the gas cannot expand and thus cannot do any work therefore w is equal to 0 and the equation becomes cv is equal to delta e internal divided by n delta t from monoatomic gas equation the change in internal energy must be delta e internal is equal to 3 by 2 n r into delta t therefore cv is equal to 3 by 2 r we can now generalize monoatomic gas equation for the internal energy of any ideal gas by substituting the value of cv and we get e internal is equal to n cv into t this equation applies not only to an ideal monoatomic gas but also to diatomic and polyatomic ideal gases provided the appropriate value of cv is used when a confined ideal gas undergoes temperature change delta t the resulting change in its internal energy is delta e internal is equal to n cv into delta t this equation tells us that a change in the internal energy of a confined ideal gas depends on only the change in the temperature not on what type of process produces the change molar specific heat at constant pressure we now assume that the temperature of our ideal gas is increased by the same small amount delta t as previously but now the necessary energy is added with the gas under constant pressure an experiment for doing this is shown in figure and the pv diagram for the process is also plotted for such experiments we find that the heat q is related to the temperature change by q is equal to n cp into delta t here cp is a constant called the molar specific heat at constant pressure the cp is greater than the molar specific heat at constant volume cv because energy must now be supplied not only to raise the temperature of the gas but also for the gas to do work that is to lift the weighted piston to relate molar specific heats cp and cv we start with the first law of thermodynamics delta e internal is equal to q minus w we next replace each term in this equation by their equivalents and on substitution get n cv delta t is equal to n cp delta t minus n r delta t dividing through by n delta t we get cv is equal to cp minus r and cp is equal to cv plus r this prediction of kinetic theory agrees well with experiment not only for monoatomic gases but also for gases in general as long as their density is low enough so that we may treat them as ideal degrees of freedom and molar specific heats this table showing the experimental values depicts that the prediction of the kinetic theory for ideal gases agrees very well with experiment for real monoatomic gases that is cv is equal to 3 by 2 r the predicted and experimental values of cv for diatomic gases and polyatomic gases are greater than those for monoatomic gases let us try to explain the discrepancy by considering the possibility that molecules with more than one atom can store internal energy in forms other than translational kinetic energy the figure here shows common models of helium a monoatomic molecule containing a single atom oxygen 
a diatomic molecule containing two atoms and methane, a polyatomic molecule. For such models, we would assume that all three types of molecules can have translational motions. In addition, we would assume that the diatomic and polyatomic molecules can have oscillatory motions with the atoms oscillating slightly towards and away from one another as if attached to opposite ends of a spring. To keep account of the various ways in which energy can be stored in a gas, James Clerk Maxwell introduced the theorem of equipartition of energy which states that every kind of molecule has a certain number f of degrees of freedom which are independent ways in which the molecule can store energy. Each such degree of freedom has associated with it on average an energy of half kT per molecule or half R per mole. Let us apply the theorem to the translational and rotational motions of the molecules. For the translational motion, superimpose an XYZ coordinate system on any gas. The molecules will, in general, have velocity components along all three axes. Thus, gas molecules of all types have three degrees of translational freedom, that is, three ways to move in translation and on average an associated energy of 3 into half kT per molecule. For the rotational motion, imagine the origin of our XYZ coordinate system at the center of each molecule. In a gas, each molecule should be able to rotate with an angular velocity component along each of the three axes. So each gas should have 3 degrees of rotational freedom and on average an additional energy per molecule. However, experiments show this is true only for the polyatomic molecules. According to quantum theory, the physics dealing with the allowed motions and energies of molecules and atoms, a monoatomic gas molecule does not rotate and so has no rotational energy. A diatomic molecule can rotate like a top only about axis perpendicular to the line connecting the atoms and not about that line itself. Therefore, a diatomic molecule can have only two degrees of rotational freedom and rotational energy of only two into half kT per molecule. A hint of quantum theory. We can improve the agreement of kinetic theory with experiment by including the oscillations of the atoms in a gas of diatomic or polyatomic molecules. For example, the two atoms in oxygen molecule can oscillate towards and away from each other with the interconnecting bond acting like a spring. However, experiments show that such oscillations occur only at relatively high temperatures of the gas. The motion is turned on only when the gas molecules have relatively large energies. Rotational motion is also subject to such turning on but at lower temperature. This figure here is of help in seeing this turning on of rotational motion and oscillatory motion. The ratio Cv upon R for diatomic hydrogen gas is plotted against temperature with the temperature scale logarithmic to cover several orders of magnitude. Below about 80k, we find that Cv upon R is equal to 1.5. This result implies that only the three translational degrees of freedom of hydrogen are involved in the specific heat. As the temperature increases, the value of Cv upon R gradually increases to 2.5, implying that two additional degrees of freedom have become involved. 
Quantum theory shows that these two degrees of freedom are associated with the rotational motion of the hydrogen molecules and that this motion requires a certain minimum amount of energy. At very low temperatures, below 80K, the molecules do not have enough energy to rotate. As the temperature increases from 80K, first a few molecules and then more and more of them obtain enough energy to rotate and the value of Cv upon R increases until all of the molecules are rotating and Cv upon R is equal to 2.5. Similarly, quantum theory shows that oscillatory motion of the molecules requires a certain higher minimum amount of energy. This minimum amount is not met until the molecules reach a temperature of about 1000 K as shown. As the temperature increases beyond 1000 K, more and more molecules have enough energy to oscillate and the value of Cv upon R increases until all of the molecules are oscillating and Cv upon R is equal to 3.5. Here as shown in the figure, the plotted curve stops at 3200 Kelvin because there the atom of a hydrogen molecule oscillate so much that they overwhelm their bond and the molecule then dissociates into two separate atoms. The turning on of the rotation and vibration of the diatomic and polyatomic molecules is due to the fact that the energies of these motions are quantized, that is restricted to certain values. There is a lowest allowed value for each type of motion, unless the thermal agitation of the surrounding molecules provides those lowest amounts, a molecule simply cannot rotate or vibrate. Conclusion So friends, here we come to the end of our discussion in this lecture and therefore we sum up. The specific heats of gases are generally expressed as molar specific heats. For a monoatomic ideal gas, the internal energy is all in the form of kinetic energy and kinetic theory provides the expression for that energy related to the kinetic temperature. Equipartition theorem is general formula that relates the temperature of a system with its average energies. The original idea of equipartition was that in thermal equilibrium, energy is shared equally among all of its various forms. For example, the average kinetic energy per degree of freedom in the translational motion of a molecule should equal that of its rotational motions. Although the equipartition theorem makes very accurate predictions in certain conditions, it becomes inaccurate when quantum effects are significant such as at low temperatures. So friends, that is it from my side on thermodynamics. Hope you must have gained enough. See you soon with another series of lectures. Thank you very much.